evening. My name is Alexander Hagen. I'm the CEO of a small, medium-sized tech company in Silicon Valley. Previously, I've been a financial journalist, a financial analyst, and a research engineer in telecommunications. I filed several patents. Tonight, I'm going to be speaking about the election, uh, Mitt Romney, Barack Obama, and Ron Paul. <clears throat> And I'm going to be focusing on the betrayal to progressives of Obama and how actually Ron Paul is a much better choice for Democrats and progressives than Obama. And that should not make him objectionable to conservatives that he's good for the country and good for Democrats. So as of the um, polls closing in New Hampshire, the media has finally figured out that their key demographic, 18 to 30, supports Ron Paul over all the others. Uh, this is true in the Republican primary and amongst independents haven't studied the figures amongst Democratic youth, uh, but we'll get into that in a moment. And they cannot destroy the movement using fear, uncertainty, and doubt, which is an old term in Silicon Valley called FUD for discrediting your competitor's product. Lawrence O'Donnell just last night said that Ron Paul was a statistical anomaly, a freak. Mark Halperin tried to feed him the line uh, that he wanted to end uh, Head Start, whereas in fact uh, the Ron Paul campaign is going to preserve all social programs um, until there's a good transition program, which is going to take more than four years. So you can uh, vote uh, to get to oust Ron Paul or whoever succeeds him uh, in the good cause of uh, reforming our country to have our uh, liberty and economic sanity and military sanity back. Uh, it might be his son, Rand Paul. It might be his vice president, or he might be uh, spry enough to give it another run. But it's not going to be in the first four years you're going to see any cuts to social programs other than some very specific and targeted ones, which is to close four departments. And departments don't actually uh, impact uh, benefit distribution. They're bureaucracies. Okay, so the media has figured this out. And then there's, of course, Dana Bash from CNN, who said she herself was worried about the Ron Paul campaign betraying her own uh, partisan uh, corporatist Republican interest or uh, whatnot. So it's on to South Carolina, Florida, and Nevada. And then there's also the possibility of a third party candidacy. So there's a poll that came out uh, a couple of uh, three days ago. Uh, which I will post in the comments of footnote two, which shows that um, Obama would win in a three-way right now with uh, uh, Ron Paul getting 17%. But that doesn't include Ron Paul's vice president, which I believe, if there was an independent run, would be somebody like Ralph Nader or Dennis Kucinich, somebody who would really shake things up and pull another 10 points off of Obama. So now we can make him 27%, couple of point loss, let's say 25%, now 8% a couple of point loss from the Republicans because if he pulls in somebody like Nader or Kucinich, it might hurt him slightly with conservatives. Um, so, but we're going to pull eight points off of Obama, who's currently projected at 42. That puts him down to 35. Um, so we're looking at 25 to 35 right there. So it's getting pretty close, and the nation hasn't heard his message yet. People haven't heard his message. When they do, they're going to be attracted because he's going to give us many of the things that we were hoping to, for that Obama promised that Obama utterly betrayed us on. Obama joined the neocon nightmare that he promised to end. And I'll explain why shortly. The government is so corrupt, and Obama was the last chance we could give a big government uh, a big government is a vessel of change. It isn't impossible to provide universal prosperity through big government. It's just very difficult. And we thought Obama could do it, adroitly pivot and help us with our mortgages. Uh, he has said, uh, you know, the Republican attitude is you're on your own, you're on your own. But what he gave us uh, was that we're not on our own. Big Brother is watching us. Uh, it's a horrible uh, form of company that we have. Um, 
So at any rate, the government's so corrupt, and, and Obama has so deeply damaged so many people's belief in government, it'll take a generation to repair to the idea of using big government to solve some of the problems that we have directly. Uh, poverty, because of pover the systems we have now, you can actually make more money keeping a community poor because you get block grants every year if you're a bureaucrat or a contractor. If you eliminate their poverty, you no longer service them and you lose your customer. Uh, I mean, that's a cynical way to put it, but there's a lot of risks with trying to use big government to eliminate problems. Ron Paul has said something interesting. He said that uh, we increase the price of things when big government tries to subsidize it. So in the case, like education, there's a lot of uh, interesting articles and videos about how education prices track exactly how much money kids can borrow. So if the kid can borrow 17000 and they figure out what his pain point is, they'll make a tuition of 20. If the kid can borrow 25, they're going to make the tuition 28. So they'll keep, this, the more the money the government will willing to lend you, the more you go in debt. Uh, and there's similar bubble problems with uh, real estate subsidy, as we saw. So he's right. Um, and uh, at one point, we could have gone left to solve our problems. But Obama utterly destroyed that, in my humble opinion. And there are parts of it which I can clearly hands down prove. That's why people are worrying to Ron Paul, because his message is safer, because it's change we can verify. Uh, why is it change we can verify? Well, first of all, Ron Paul's record. He has never sold out or compromised on anything. Uh, and he's clearly a man who's very uh, fascinated and intellectually curious with a very strong philosophy. You agree with him or not? There's very few people who would say he lacks integrity. He has returned monies. He hasn't taken a pension. He's returned unused funds. He's, behaved in a, he's said no to every... A uh, thing that he doesn't believe in, and he's consistently said things that get him booed. He was there right after 9-11 saying, if you think they attacked us because we're free, you don't understand what's going on. And he's said very unpopular things. He doesn't care if it's popular or not. And he, uh, so if you watch him in action, he has a track record. Uh, the chance that he would become a neocon after his uh, being a pro-peace, small government conservative all his life, uh, I would say is zero unless they develop a ray gun to turn people into neocons. And I actually am concerned enough about this after Obama that I would suggest that Ron Paul have a perimeter of security and not let the Secret Service into his perimeter of security, not let any drinks. He, he should be careful the way a college girl is be careful about getting drugged uh, based on Obama uh, because. It is pretty weird how much he has uh, become a neocon after what he said in his candidacy. So the people's trust is broken. Uh, the, every time we use big government, they help the rich instead of the poor, really. And we end up in deeper debt. And then they steal our rights in the name of security. Obama said he would restore the Constitution. Instead, he not only reauthorized the Patriot Act, but the definition of how they implement it is classified and... Uh, uh, one of the, I think Ron Wyden from Oregon, if I'm not mistaken, said American people would be very upset if they knew how they were interpreting the very interpretation of the Patriot Act is secret, and it suspends our Bill of Rights, basically, it declares martial law. Then we've just improved this new de uh, National Defense Authorization Act that goes further, and the military is allowed to arrest us anywhere in the world and put us in indefinite detention forever. It's a hell scenario. It's unbelievable. It's a complete sellout of the whole Constitution, and it's all over a few extremists. When this country had 100 extremist groups back in the 60s, 200, 300, and we didn't have to give up our rights back then. Plus, we had the Soviet Union gunning for us. We didn't give up these rights back then. This is all a scam. It's very creepy, and Obama is championing it. Obama said he was a constitutional scholar. I watched him say in Libya that he didn't even have to put his constitutional scholar hat on. We hired him because he's a constitutional scholar. It would be like me hiring an engineer who had a background in electrical engineering, and he says, I don't even need to use my electrical engineering skills on this. It's absurd. Then we have SOPA, which is this thing, uh, Anti-Piracy Act on the Internet, that I believe the Obama administration is supporting, which is very creepy and allows them to meddle with the underpinnings of the Internet.
Then we have this drone program, which is just causing us endless enemies all over the world. Imagine if a weird planes are flying around your community, shooting and killing uh, people that are politically unpopular with another country and occasionally taking out a family or two with them. Uh, and then, you know, he said he was going to obey the Constitution, he was going to restore constitutionality, he's expanded undeclared wars. Libya was an undeclared war, uh, regardless of your feelings about it. <coughs> he said he'd help the middle class and the poor. He did neither. He's never given an ounce of homeowner help. Uh, it was unbelievable how small the mix of money was in these different packages for uh, mortgage assistance. There's no teeth in any of the provisions. He helped. The money was transferred to the creditors, credit the the uh, bankers, not the uh, the uh, consumers. He sided consistently with big uh, corporate interests, as far as I can tell. The stimulus package had virtually no money for the Small Business Administration, which would have been the most logical place to create stimulus is with small business. And with small business loans, there's very little risk because it's loans. Um, and business loans are different from school loans. They're used to make money. They're not used to uh, add value to your future earning potential on a job you may never find. Um, Okay, uh, so that should end that about Obama restoring the Constitution, helping the middle class and the poor. Um, for the moment, the government and the media are controlled by a very creepy, unpatriotic group of selfish and vain people willing to destroy our country in their lust for absolute power. And Romney and Obama are two examples. Santorum simply is over his head. He is not able to understand economics or foreign affairs as far as I can see. He basically adopts the policies that sound good to him. I could uh, say some things about other people who run in the Republican ticket that seemed a little bit not ready for prime time. That doesn't mean he never will be, but for the moment, he has a very, as far as I can see, primitive two-dimensional understanding of the gray areas and nuances of the reality of politics and U.S. competitiveness in the world. Gingrich is clearly a neocon. Obama said he would talk to our enemies. He wouldn't even talk to our allies. Officially, Gaddafi had surrendered his weapons of mass destruction and was cooperating with the U.S. War on Terror in their rendition program. We didn't even talk to our quote-unquote ally. Of course, everyone hates Gaddafi. He's a perfect poster bad guy, but Obama said he'd talk to our enemies. And uh, it's awful what happened in Libya. Actually, about half the people in Libya did support the old government. They had a very high education. It was a police state. I'm not going to get into defending Libya. I'm going to get into Obama's hypocrisy. He said, we talked to our enemies. I swear to you, I studied Libya carefully. There was no serious attempt to talk to anybody. It was a testing ground for all the weapon systems of every NATO country. Everybody took turns bombing it. Quite horrendous, in my view. Uh, then there was Goldman Sachs, Hank Paulson's company. Bill Clinton's daughters married into them. They were called a blood-sucking squid on the face of humanity by Rolling Stones. They got involved in speculating on commodities that drove the prices out of the third world, and that was one of the main reasons we had an Arab Spring, was the uncontrolled growth of costs of wheat in the Philippines, it might have been rice, because they're now a middleman between a super poor farmer in the third world and his market. They take it, they probably make more than the farmer does on his a product and it's caused mass starvation all over the world. That's why they called him a blood sucking squid on the face of humanity. They were instrumental in manipulating the bailout of AIG. Uh, and then I want to talk about Obama's super double cross of the National Defense Authorization Act. Obama claimed that he didn't like the fact that American citizens were targeted and that he thought the language should be removed. And Levin on the Senate floor said, are you aware that we uh, didn't have this language in here and the, and the administration demanded we insert it? So Obama is a liar, 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 pants on fire. And you ask Al Franken if you don't believe me. Now, <clears throat> then we go on. So we got our Goldman Sachs guys. They, now, they really manipulated us. I watched all that really carefully, and it, I never realized that AIG, the Goldman Sachs was manipulating us to bail out AIG, which, as you recall, was the biggest of them because all their bets were insured by AIG. It wasn't until after AIG had been bailed out that I figured that out. I can follow it closely. Imagine all the people who don't. G Goldman Sachs is the number one contributor to both uh, Mitt Romney and Barack Obama. Many people in the Treasury and the administration are closely intertwined with Goldman Sachs. It's the same people. It's the same ruling class. They run everything. 
Romney will not restore our constitutionality in terms of martial law provisions of the national of the SB 1867 and all this business about being able to lock everybody up forever without any rights. Um, he hasn't said anything about eliminating that. He hasn't said anything about, uh, he's talked about increasing the military. The military is what's going to cause our defeat. It is so laughable strategically, the idea of deficit spending on military during relative peacetime. It's so laughable. Anybody who's ever played Monopoly or Risk knows that during peacetime, you build factories, you don't build tanks. You build the tanks once you actually start a real war. If you build tanks during peacetime, the other guy builds factories. So when there is a real war, he can make 10 times more tanks than you.